My guest today is John Peterson. How are you, John? All right, Dave. It's been a while. It's, it's been to too long. You. It's been a long time. In I'm fact, to think uh, the last time. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's been like a hundred pounds since I last saw you. At least, at least, yeah. That's <laughs> that's a story for another day. But uh, but yeah, uh, thank you, COVID. I didn't get COVID. I, I briefly did, but uh, but nothing serious. But no, just tried to make use of the lockdown. Yeah, and if you lost, how much weight did you lose during? Uh... So I would say the numbers are probably around on just like the fat side of it, uh, because what happens is you you Fuck sort it. of go up and down a bit, and I would say the net of it is probably I put on about thirty five pounds of muscle, maybe a little bit more, and then I probably have lost about one hundred twenty pounds of fat. Oh my goodness, that's uh, I was a big boy. I, I I hit it kind of well, but I was a big I was a big boy. Here's the other thing: I stopped drinking in twenty eighteen. That was a big part of it. Oh, congratulations! Thank you, thank oh. you. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm drinking a lot of coffee these days. Me too. I still drink coffee. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do for a living? I mean, so I'm just independent consulting at this point. Um, you know, I've floated in and out of it. You know, I've worked for various consultancies and things like that. Uh, and, um, you know, so that's really what I'm doing anymore. I mean, our industry has changed a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, if there's ever a time where you really have to be agile about it, you know, today, today more than ever. Um, so that's, so that's what I'm doing and, you know, working on a few other projects in terms of some publishing and writing and, you know, content and things like that. Oh, nice. Um, I want to see this of industry changing and us changing with it and agile. Like I want to, I'll, I'll take you back about, uh, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Um, I went to work for a small consulting company. I first heard the word agile. I heard it from a, mm -hmm. a fellow named Brian Prince. And since then, Brian have have become good friends, but sure. he, uh, well, Brian, he, well, good man. Yeah, he yeah. is a good man. And I, I, yeah. um, he introduced me to this concept of scrum and agile mm -hmm. and his, he had, he and his team had developed their own flavor of it. And it was eye opening for me because I had been working for uh, a big company doing waterfall. And I started mm -hmm. thinking back, wow, these projects would have been a lot better if I had just applied some of these principles to them. Sure. Sure. And uh, it, I wasn't alone. A lot of people adopted different agile methodologies, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of taken it kind of took over the world, the IT world, for a long time. But you have some issues with it, right? I do. I do. I, I do. Please uh, share that with yeah. me. <laughs> so I don't have. A, I, I so a big chunk of my career has been dedicated to agile and Scrum. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an early adopter of. Essentially, you know, when the Agile Manifesto was published in, in 2001 in February, uh, you know, I embraced that. Uh, I was an ALM Ranger TFS guy, oh, wow. um, process guy with, you know, uh, as an MVP, um, you know, back in those days, uh, a long time ago. Yeah. And I, I always, on today. there you go. I see that. That's a nice one. And, you know, and I always thought that the and this, some of this is also my training as a lawyer, because a lot of times what what, what happens is, is how we do things is, 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 is as much or more important than specifically what we're doing or the product that we're producing because of compliance and various regs and and things like that. And as we've progressed in time, here we are in 2024. And, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and put it out there. You know, sometimes I wonder if we're in this post truth you know, world. And uh, I started looking at what is Scrum. I started evaluating, like, what, what exactly is Scrum and who created it, actually? Um, was it Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland? Um, and, and this is something that's been gnawing at me for probably ever since I became a PST, a professional Scrum trainer. So I was affiliated with Scrum.org. I was one of the first... Oh. PSTs back in 2010 when scrum.org created. And the one thing that I could never get out of my mind, just, just this one question is why are there multiple scrum organizations? Why are these, why are there these two certification bodies and this and that? And, and, and I have to profess that at the time I was pretty ignorant of a lot of the backstory. I was never involved with scrum Alliance. In fact, you know, I sort of adopted the Groucho Marx philosophy that, you know, I would never join a country club that would have me as a member. <laughs> Although I did, I did join the MVP club for a while. Um, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so all this time, right, I'm, you know, it just gnawing at me and I decided, you know, 
I'm going to confront the question once and for all, because there have been rumblings. And if you search on the Internet enough, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll find certain things, but piecing it together. So I thought, well, my training as a lawyer here, cutting through a lot of the drama. Can I get to the core of it? So here it is. You ready? I'm ready. Hit OK, me. so uh, you've never seen me as a lawyer, so you're going to kind of see that now, or yeah. at least kind just, of just for the audience. John it. has a degree right. in law and was a practicing attorney for a while. Right. And he, he gave it all up to join this right. IT right. Right. Oh, <laughs> no, actually, I, I was an IT guy before I ever went to law school. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> so let's so let's get to our evidentiary basis and let's get to our documents because the one thing that we do want to avoid with something like this is a lot of the hyperbole. Right. Try to inject, make sure that it's factual base, factually basis. In the chat, by the way, I put a couple of links to some, you know, Twitter tweets that I put out there just to, to back up uh, certain things that I'm saying here. Uh, but let's let's get to the documents first. Let's just get to our universe of just the the four corners of everything we're going to look at to make this out to be. Okay. Here's the first one. So this is the latest Scrum Guide, okay. published, you know, 2020, and you'll see at the top it's got it's got it's got uh, Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland in there, okay. and you know you'll find that there are there are copyright notices and things like that. So starting with this because this is pretty much universally accepted as the document that defines what Scrum is, okay, Scrum Guide, and uh, so that's that document. I like the fact that it's short. It's nineteen. You know, it's very short, right? It's nineteen, you know, 20, 20 pages, whatever. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to go back in time. So I'm going to start from present, most recent documents, and then go back, and then I'll start to pull it forward. All right, this document, Scrum Alliance. Oh, by the way, this is from this is act. This Scrum Guide is on the domain ScrumGuides.org, I believe, or ScrumGuide.org. They, the Scrum Alliance and Scrum Org sort of cooperated uh, on something but basically this is this one right here this is the first scrum guy hmm. you will find very little similarity you'll find some similarities but you'll find a lot of differences between these documents you know this is 2020 this is like around 2009 i believe something like that hmm. um so you have these two documents uh, again uh, pretty much IP claimed by, you know, Schwaber and Sutherland and, you know, or Scrum Alliance or whomever, right? So they got those two documents. Okay. <clears throat> Third document. We're going back in time now. We're at 1995. This is the currently available OOPSLA. That's the, that was the object oriented programming, you know, language conference of the ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery. Uh, the folks that hand out the Turing Award, you know, every few years, uh, whoever's genius enough to earn it. So uh, this 95 paper is actually, you know, headlined by Ken. Uh, Jeff gets credited in here. But basically, this is generally uh, thought of as the uh, sort of like the, the presentation, the, the coming out party, if you will, uh, Austin 1995, Uppsala. This paper being presented to quote unquote introduce Scrum to the world. Now, I want to be fair in this document because, and you will see in footnote number three, just take my word for it and you look at it, and you can freely get this. This document is very, very findable. Um, you're going to see two names uh, in footnote number three Takuchi, Hirotaka Takuchi. And Ikijiro Nanaka. Now, these two gentlemen are Harvard professors, were Harvard professors, um, and uh, they wrote a paper in 1986 that was published in the Harvard Business Review called The New New Product Game. We're going to get to that document in a moment. Uh, but, um, but that document is going to prove to be very... Uh, be very influential, but it's actually not going to be the most influential document because I'm going to get to something that's going to um, uh, maybe supplant that. You see, because often this document, that Harvard Business Review document from 1986, that's nearly 40 years ago, is often credited as like, well, this is where Scrum kind of came from or whatever hmm. in some corners. But um not not entirely true, um, but this is 1995. This paper, 
purportedly. Yep. Right. You know, it's introducing uh, Scrum to the world. However, there was something else that happened in 1995. Okay. These are the this book. Harvard professors. They uh, published a book. The, is it these are the Harvard, of, of the article on the Harvard Business it, Review? It, it, it absolutely is. So if we think, since we're going back in time, this is 1995. So like nine years earlier, the 1986 article would have come out. Um. This is this is very you know you can get this on Kindle. Uh, I ended up getting the hardbound version of it, but really you can go right to the preface, and I'm just going to read part of it. Okay. The roots of this book go back 12 years. We were asked by the late professor William J. Abernathy to submit a paper for the 75th anniversary colloquium of the Harvard Business School on the unique features of the new product development process within Japanese companies. The ideas generated in that study became the basis of our 1986 Harvard Business Review article, The New New Product Development Game. In that article, we used the rugby metaphor. <laughs> Scrum. To describe the speed and flexibility with which Japanese companies developed new products, as in rugby, the ball gets passed within the team as it moves up the field as a unit. Now, now it's interesting, uh, Dave. You know, you, you, Scrum immediately came to mind to you. Sure. Yeah. Scrum is, but a, is a rugby term. It's what it's called. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And and the deal is is that you will not find the word Scrum in this book. Uh -huh. You will find reference to something called sashimi, which is related to Scrum. But the interesting thing is is that in Japanese well, Japanese culture and philosophy, um, it's, all by, it's all metaphor. A lot of it's metaphor. Sure. And the interesting thing about metaphor is that metaphor is to use something that is completely different than the thing of actual focus, as opposed to an analogy, which is like as a. Right. So a team can work like in a scrum. That's, a, that's an analogy. They work together and things like that. But as far as these gentlemen were concerned, Scrum was actually sort of a – it was sort of an oh, by the way, but it was never really the central focus. It was actually the ball and how the ball gets passed hmm. and how knowledge gets created. Okay. That's what it was really about. Now, to get to the practical, we're going to Ed Jordan Press now. Remember Ed Jordan, Dave? I do not. Okay, Ed Jordan was a pretty big systems guy, and uh, he, he opened up an imprint, Prentice Hall. This book was published in 1990, so we're going back now five years. We're not in 1986 yet. And in this book, you will find – see right there? Sashimi right? and Scrum. Ah, interesting. Right, right, right. So you've got the, so you've got the all-at-once model. Right, you know, and then you've sort of got this sashimi approach, right? Which they, and this is all I did, I did, you know, take a, I took copies of these at fair use, you know, in the thing here, uh, but just to prove the point. And then look, look, see? The scrum see? approach, yes. Right. Now, now keep in mind that what this, this book, this book, um, the best, the best analogy I can give for this book would be like clean code by Martin et al., you know, Bob Martin and Ward right, Cunningham. A long time ago, yeah. Right, it's a, com it's a compilation, right? Mm -hmm. It's a compilation. However, in a compilation, and I'm going to get a little legally here, legalese is that in a compilation, you've got some work that comes from other sources, like, by the way, in the, I will tell you, in the references of this book, you will not find the name Schwaber or Sutherland. You will find Takuchi and Nanaka. You will find them. Um, and so this is 1990, all right? So this is halfway roughly between 1986 and 1995 hmm. when, when, when this book came out. And then and so you have this, okay. right? Yeah. So th this predates the, uh, the, the Scrum document right. by exactly. Sutherland. So right. not, not surprising it doesn't contain references to the work. Abs well, well but, see, but see, here's the thing, right, is that I think – when we look at, and I'm going to get to the 1980, this is the 1986 paper now, right? When we get to this, 
That's Notice the Har- by the Harvard way, Business Review. This is the Harvard Business Review. Now, this may be hard to see here, but you see where it says the rules of the game? See right uh, there? Yes. yes. The rules are <laughs> interesting. Okay, so, so, so I think you're saying that, that uh, yeah. Sutherland and Schweber drew inspiration from all of these, from these people that came before. They stood on the shoulders of giants. Just did, like we all do. Did they, did they give credit? Did they acknowledge that inspiration? So let's, so let's talk about that because I would say that um, when you, and I, and I put, the, this is outlined in the PDF a bit, that when you go to the 1995 paper, you will find that, um, like, for example, uh, I'll read real quick from number two overview. Our – now, watch the use of pro- – we have to watch the use of pronouns here because the, 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 the group, you know, like we, our – I'm going to – because you're going to wonder, like, well, who is we exactly? But okay. let's go ahead. Let me read this. I'm going to read this verbatim. Our new approach to systems development is based on both defined and black box process management. We call the approach the scrum methodology. C, now this is a pair. So in citation, right, this would be a parenthetical. Mm -hmm. Uh, C, Takuchi and Nanaka 1986. So that's the Harvard paper. Now, well, except that that who is we? But who is we? Okay. We call the no Takuchi and Nonaka called it Scrum, <laughs> okay. sort of. But 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 Schwaber and Sutherland really did not, and and so that's that's very important. Now keep in mind, this paper is from 1995. This book, uh, 1990. I want to draw your attention to the back of the document which has a reference section and it's reference number nine uh, reference see. number nine read, read to me. says uh de grace and uh 1990 wicked problems righteous solutions you were impressed the book is listed back here uh-huh. in but it's not as a footnote there's there's what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that there's much in here that actually comes from here. Got it. So if I'm, let make sure I understand here. The, the Sutherland and Schwaber paper from 1995, I think it was, uh, does in its references list that book that you, from 1990 right. that you just said. It doesn't right. explicitly have, a, say, this particular part came from that right. book. It, does, it just says we drew information from that. Right. Now, now, now this is what I'm going to say. I don't have a problem with that. What, I, do you, I, what do you have a problem with, John? What I have a problem <laughs> with is that over time, this has been erased. Uh, this has been erased. So they're not getting the credit they deserve for the foundation they laid for this popular methodology. Uh, so these are uh, these are valid points that they've uh, that uh, Schwaber and Sutherland have drawn on these. But but so what? Why should we care about this? Why, why do right, you care right, so much about it? Right, right, right. So there's a really a couple of reasons why I do care about it. Number one is that I remember the 1990s um, was, you know, very early. 89, 90 is when I started my technology career. And uh, I remember that being a very fertile time, mm. you know, with uh, VB, VB, you know, VB6 and you know, VB3. And, sure. And you know, I was still a Fox. Fox Pro guy, you know, oh, just, 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 there was just a lot. Back to the good right. So there, there was a, there was a lot of, um, there, there was a lot of really cool things happening, and it yeah. was also a very exciting time. It was the PC we were, revolution, I think. We were also learning about, we were also learning about, you know, this, this, this book, this cool white book that every, this white covered book with the ribbons on it, it was the Gang of Four book, right? Uh, you know, design, it was the design pack. Pack. And, and, you know, mine's pretty dog-eared at this point, right? And the thing is, is that I learned from that. But to a, but but the way Scrum, and, and I don't want to put this solely, this isn't solely on Schwaber and so on, I don't, but they do put themselves out there. But I, I want to say this is more of a collective problem where Scrum, just as a general sense, has been co-opted. 
And for, from a from a standpoint of it's largely it's largely a certification and training mill type of thing. Um, what's interesting to me is that, and I want to go back to a comment that you had made earlier about our our mutual friend Brian Prince, and you had said something about uh, well, you know, he he introduced you to Scrum and they did their own thing, right? Correct. What's really yeah. interesting is is that the 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 the, um, the doctrine. The, the orthodoxy, the, uh, the, the, dogma. the dogmatic, the dogma will tell you that's not scrum. That, and, and you know what? Guilty is charged. And I guess that's the other thing that really matters. I'm here to call the yellow and red card on myself to say, <laughs> I've been part of this, but I didn't know. And the deal is, is that when I've read through this and I've read through the history, it's like anybody who basically took the gist of the idea and then fused it with their organizational knowledge or as part of their quest for organizational knowledge, that becomes their pitch, their field of play. And that the ball is the knowledge and how you pass that from game to game, or, you know, we sort of washed it down to like a sprint. And what does that mean? My contention, and I'll close with this, is that all the angst that we see, in Scrum and Agile about like, is it this? Is it that? Is it dead? Is it alive? And why is it that everybody's got to put their two cents in and say, oh, and by the way, if you want more help, I'm selling training. Why can't we just simply say, you know, let's take a collective breath and say, let's put a premium on truth. And now, I'm going to give everyone fair warning. References in this book are like John Paul Sartre, <laughs> Hegel, Marx. Very philosophical. Nietzsche. This is right up my alley, right? And so when I saw that, I'm like, okay. And, and But I do think what this goes to is how we make decisions and how we improve, continuous improvement. That's definitely the theme in this. Certification doesn't require that or you know other things like that. But understanding your business – and having an open mind on this, I think, will get people further down the road. And I simply just say that let's just call Scrum what it is. It was, you know, today, whatever Scrum is, and if it's called Scrum, it's called Scrum. It has nothing to do with what Scrum was meant to be. And Scrum itself was an oh, by the way thing. It was really more about the team. It was really more about passing the ball. And I want to say one other thing. Remember in a scrum, there are competing teams. Yeah, this is in a rugby scrum. They both have to cooperate under the rules because they both have an interest in the ball. Neither can take the ball. Neither can destroy the ball because without the ball, there's no game. And one day, the other side may get a little bit more. Obviously, this is getting into the cooperation aspect of it, right? But under the rules. I and like I think this there's metaphor. Some, <laughs> right. But I do think there's something to say. It's like, you know what? I'm going to train really hard. And, and business, you're challenging me that you need something. And right now, I can't give it to you as a technologist. But you know what? Maybe if I train a little bit more to understand your world. And maybe if I can apply some of that knowledge into what we're doing over here, we can now have what we would call explicit knowledge, not tacit knowledge, which is what tribal knowledge is. And but by working together as a team or as teams under the rules, but still competing for the benefit of the sport or the benefit of the organization. Um, I think everybody gets happier because I will say this. When I was a practicing attorney and I was a business counselor, I'd always tell a client, I can draft you a fine contract, but it will never possibly be a crystal ball and account for every situation. Right. At the end of the day, you go into everything with goodwill and it, business must be mutually beneficial. It's got to start that way and it's got to remain that way. And, and, and by the way, it is true. You dance with the one that brought you. You do that. But some you go home after the dance. And sometimes you move in different directions. And that's okay. That's what change is. 
But I would like us at least to kick off a conversation for people on their own. Say, hmm, what, what, why, why do this? Well, why co-op Scrum? Because it was a great business. And a lot of people, and some people did really well with it. And, uh, but a lot of other people also contributed to that. A lot of people that I know that don't get the credit that they deserve. Not just these two gentlemen. And I think these two gentlemen, Harvard University would certainly, um, um, agree with that. And uh, one one thing I will say is people may ask like, well, why didn't they do something about it? Well, A, I don't know. B, it wasn't their burden to do so. Um, you know, they may not have been aware. Um, Sutherland and Schwaber in our world and that world of academic rigor are really separate. If there's one thing I will say is that when it comes to the Uppsala paper and it being, you know, it has this sort of uh, guild of academic rigor and things like that. One thing is for sure. Nobody serious really reviewed that paper because I reviewed it finally and just said, well, wait a second. There's an orphaned reference here. It's not applied anywhere. Just on that basis alone, it was pretty easy to see. It's the kind of thing that I would have done as a law clerk and doing site checking for a brief that was to go to court. You know, it's that type of, it's, it's kind of mundane. It's boring work. It's pretty simple to do, but you just you have to go to the grindstone to do it. And that's kind of how I pulled this together, along with um, you know a few other things. Sure. That's yeah. It. I, that's my, it. my blog. I, I write a lot of technical information on my blog, and I I like to give credit where credit is due and mention where I learned things. But I'm not applying any academic rigor. My blog would not pass. No, but you give credit. That's the whole thing. Say, hey, it's just, it's, yeah, very, but... it's very informal, and sometimes I may not because if I draw from two or three sources, I'm, I may not uh, list all. But that's of fine. Them. Yeah, but that's fine, right? But see, here's the thing, right? You don't. It's about how we present the work, right? Because yeah, it, it, this that is wouldn't I... fly if I applied it to the Harvard no. Business Review or some ac- other academic journal. But I... it works fine for my simple blog with uh, with my five subscribers. But... <laughs> I would say that. Oh, stop! I, I would say this though. I, I would say. Um, if we applied the reasoning on why uh, someone may say, well, you know, it sounds like Ken and Jeff did create Scrum. It's like, well, no, they applied, supposedly applied it, but none of that, none of that work, it's somewhat documented, but it would largely be hearsay because it's all coming from them. It's not coming from an independent source, right? Yeah. And and because of that, right, I just say, you know, the when you line up the dates and everything, leave the personalities out of it. And when you line the dates up, it, it just doesn't work. And if, if you are somebody who is complaining about like, well, why isn't Scrum working where I am or why doesn't it seem to work? It's because the thing that you're working with that is called Scrum is nothing like what Scrum was supposed to be. And unless there's a soul and meaning to something, that can be applied, um, then it really has no value. And I would just finally say, using that reasoning, if I apply the adapter pattern as I learned in the Gang of Four book, I therefore help create, create it, help co-create it and co-develop it. Then that would be nonsense. So that's it. And I think, and also I think just the public has a right to know why that's the case. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, do you know yeah. if these folks are still alive? The ones that uh, wrote these original papers. It's been I believe they are. I believe years. they. I believe. I believe they are. I believe you know they're in their eighties, you know, early nineties, you know, and and quite frankly, And here's the one thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, quite frankly, it's really Harvard that would have the interest, which is kind of interesting because in the news, I mean, copyright, plagiarism. That's what got the you know that's part of what got the Harvard president bounced. Um, you know, it was part of, that was part of the rationale for it, and supposedly. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, a lot of us create. A lot of us, you know, we write. Um, and in this world of AI and things like that, you know, we already have a lot of thievery going on, right? And, and the deal is, is that, you know, that unfortunately, a lot, a lot of times the ship has sailed. Um, so so I, I, I do not – and by the way, I believe these authors, I do not believe – they're with they're alive anymore but um but the 
you know, this is a Prentice Hall book, by the way, but that's that's kind of who your rights holder would be, at least on this stuff, would be Prentice Hall. They're still around. And uh, so, but I want to say as a practical matter, I really think this is the kind of thing where Scrum Alliance and Scrum Org really kind of have to figure this stuff out and say, look, are we going to perpetuate this? <laughs> or are we really going to give credit where credit is due? Mm -hmm. And and I think I think that's uh, I think that's very important to do. That's a good thought to close on. We're just about out of time. John, thank All you right. so much. This is uh, things that I hadn't considered. I hadn't really. I've learned something today. Thank you. That's that's. You're welcome. To be a friend of technology, uh, I think one of the things that we need to do is avoid putting technology in the wrong space or putting things on technology that are more appropriately put um, on other things that interact with technology like people. And I think that responsibility and accountability um, are, are two such things. In related to what we talked about today, a big part of my career on Agile and Scrum and um, really kind of the business of how we develop software and try to uh, Create quality products. Um, the phrase I wrote a lot about in the pages of Code Magazine over 20 some odd years or, or, or a conference talk or whatever has always been people, process, and tools in that order. And there's a reason why people, people come first. Um, and, and it's only people that can really determine and make those critical decisions on the what, where, when, and why, and how of, uh, of why we're implementing a given piece of technology, you know, are we, you know, how we're deploying it, or why are we doing what we're doing? Um, I, I think that if we want technology to be a friend for us, to be a real asset and an ally for us, and, and to really make it do the things as a tool should help us do, um, if we're a friend to it, uh, because like it or not, it also includes the misery of people that implement, that have to implement technology in the wrong way. So if we deal in facts and if we deal in what purpose something is fit for, we're being a friend to it, IT, <laughs> no pun intended, and it's being a friend to us. And then we can, uh, we can be happier. So I guess that's, that's sort of it. That's that's kind of how I, I view it and really has nothing to do with technology, does it?